Hello students and grown-ups. I hope you liked looking at the pictures about genre art, art about everyday life, and hearing the author artist Faith Ringgold read that fun book, Tar Beach. And now I am going to show you how to do a little hands-on project uh, using some ideas from the story quilt, Tar Beach. For the hands-on activity that we are going to do today, you will just need some simple materials. Um, you'll need a pencil for something to draw with, uh, a ruler or even the edge of a notebook, something that you can use to make a straight line, scissors, some type of glue, something to color with, and you're also, if you have it, you're going to need some scraps of colorful paper and if you don't have this I'm going to show you something you can do uh, a little bit later on okay so once you have your materials gathered you're going to begin to begin this project like many projects you will make the decision whether or not you want your paper to be this short horizontal way or the taller vertical way you get to decide what you think you like best or what will work best with your ideas. Once you decide that, um, you're going to use your ruler and your drawing tool, your pencil, to kind of make a frame around your picture. So I'm just going to, do you see how I use the ruler kind of as a spacer to do that? And I'm gonna go all the way around and this is going to end up looking like a little frame on my paper. Okay, so now that that is done, you'll be able to start thinking about the drawing that's going to go in here. The drawing that is going to go in the center part, whether it's tall, or vertical, or horizontal, should be a genre drawing, a drawing something that is a daily thing or a common thing in your life. Like, it could be anything, like maybe some of the chores you do or how you get the table ready for a meal or um, just something that you regularly do going to the grocery store with your grown-ups or, um, you know whatever it is so I want you to think about that and and you're gonna draw it in in the center part so I've been working on a little fun drawing about something that happens a lot in our house and that is me baking cookies because I love to bake and so I drew a picture of me with a pan of hot cookies and I try to draw those lines that show that it's hot and even though I have four dogs I just drew two and I look I put these fun little lines to show like movement a little bit and here's one of my children coming to get a cookie and there's some on the table with milk so this is about baking cookies and that's something that happens at my house and then once I'm done with this drawing and then I can go ahead and color it picture is colored and I wanted to point out uh, did you notice how I I kind of outlined my drawing with my black crayon too I feel like that makes it like stand out a little bit more so if you want to do something like that that's fine and then you know sometimes coloring in a background oh, takes so long and your hand might get tired so I just use like the side of the crayon and rubbed it uh, in the background to fill it in and I think that looks pretty good for like a background. I like to do, you know, just regular coloring for the important details, but when it's like a background, I don't mind, you know, just like rub it, just to get some color in there, make it look more finished, looks nicer. But I don't like that oh, for all the things, but you know, sometimes you just really have to like do some regular coloring, you know, with your crayon. Um, but then using that side of the crayon for the big areas, I think that's fine. Now, your picture is done and colored and you have this nice like frame around it. And I want to do um, kind of like some quilted, a quilted 
look around the edges just like Faith Ringgold's story quilts that had lots of squares of different materials. So I'm gonna put this off to the side and show you what I'm thinking for a way to finish up this frame. When thinking about making that frame and thinking about um, all the beautiful fabrics in Faith Ringgold's story quilts, I just started to think about, you know, um, using some different kinds of paper. So if you have any colored paper, like here's just some construction paper, and then this is like paper that has patterns on it and I have scraps of paper. And then another thing I was thinking that would be a good, if you have any, um, like, ooh, look at this, wrapping paper for like a present, you can even use some of that or um, some magazines or newspapers, or if you have, um, some plain scraps of paper, you can do some crayon rubbings and you can use, um, you know, the texture from the bottom of your shoe or uh, from a bumpy wall and you can get some, you know, crayon rubbings and, and make your own kind of paper with a pattern. So you can do that. Or you can just take a piece of plain paper and fill that paper up with some different patterns. For example, you can uh, take your crayons or whatever drawing tools that you have and, you know, draw some simple patterns on there. And then you, we can use those papers. So those are just some ideas for colorful paper um, to make the, the border of your project. Once you have some colorful scraps of paper, you know, I have like a little bit of newspaper, some wrapping paper, some construction paper, some of this, it's like a decorative paper uh, or a cover from an old notebook or a folder. And then I have the ones that I use crayon rubbings and just decorated myself. So all of these would be perfect. I'm gonna need my scissors and my glue and I'm going to need my artwork back here because I'm going to start to decorate the edges. So I'm going to just try to use a lot of this different paper and cut some squares that will fit along the edge like that. And I like to maybe lay it out first before I start coloring it. Just I don't want to have two of the same next to each other because I feel like that's not going to look right when I have other papers to use. So I'm going to just continue with this, cutting out my squares and laying them around and then I'll glue them down. Oh goodness, this is so cute. Uh, I am loving how it looks and it's very fun with the border and I, and I used a variety of the papers that I had and now I want to glue it down and so you can use a glue stick for this and how I would do it would be to just like lift up the square and either put the glue on the back of the square or on the spot and set it back down and or if you're going to use um, this kind of glue you really you just need the smallest amount just a little tiniest microscopic dot is enough. Sometimes I, I just like spread the dot around with the tip like that. Just a small dot. Um, and then and glue them all down in place. I have everything glued on now so it's nice and um, secure and I think it looks really fun. I hope that you are able to uh, finish your border with some fun different papers and I, you know what I'm going to say. I love to see what you make so if you have a way to take a picture of it and email me a picture of your work that would make me so happy and um, this is a fun project that you can do you know multiple times and get a different looking picture because you can draw different 
genre scenes from your life and use different paper so you can make a whole bunch and they'd all look different and everybody would love to see them. So go ahead and get to work. Thanks guys.